Welcome back. Thanks for joining me for part two of this two-part series on sacred sexuality. What is it and how can I get it? Hopefully you watched part one. If you did not, I will have the link for the video at the very end of this one. But in that part one segment, we discussed the basics of sacred sexuality. So in this video, part two, we're going to discuss what in all practicality does that look like when you are dealing with shadow aspects that come out during sex, which let's be honest, that's going to happen in relationships. Uh, let's not over idealize sacred sexuality. This is a part of really getting into some deep healing through sex on a spiritual level. So what do you do in all practicality when that occurs? And we're also going to cover sacral chakra healing because many people are dealing with blocked sacral chakras. And we're also going to talk about some products that may enhance a sacred sexual experience. I hope you enjoy. So let's close out this piece talking about, you know, sex with an empath. Like if you're an empath, because I know a lot of people who follow my channel are empaths. <laughs> So let's talk about that sex with an empath. To show how sacred sex can play out in an imperfect real world situation, let me share this with you. I knew an empathic woman who once partnered with a man in need of very deep healing. As she got to know him, she learned that he came from a background of being an unplanned pregnancy, abandoned by his father who let him grow up fatherless. This life experience left him deeply scarred with a fear of unwanted pregnancy in his own life. He was so afraid of repeating the same cycle in his family that he couldn't ever fully enjoy sex, especially at the moment of his release, because there was such a fear of pregnancy overshadowing the event. What made this worse is that he'd attracted a particular type of partner in relationship after relationship, which reinforced his fears. These women were good Christian girls who were deathly afraid of being caught having sex outside of marriage. Between him and these partners, there were more than enough sexual hangups to ensure that any chance of natural healthy sex was retarded. Knowing this man's history, the woman, the empathic woman I mentioned, considered his main pain point, fear. She recognized his deep need for sex without fear of pregnancy and fear of rejection. And to give him a greater sense of security and acceptance, she first made sure they used protection, which would allow him the most natural skin-to-skin -skin contact, while knowing he was safe to release without being afraid of where or how he was releasing. Also, she assured him she was not trying to get pregnant by him, but just wanting to enjoy him. Even then, however, he was still riddled with fear, unsure if the contraception was working or if it would fail, so she had him read the package insert for himself so he'd know for sure. She shared with me, I remember when we first started having sex right before he was about to come. I'd pull him in closer and talk him through it. Come on, I'd say. And right after he'd finish, he'd want to clean up as if he'd made a mess. So I'd pull him closer to me and say, no, soak in it. Like, what's the rush? Stay a while, enjoy. <laughs> Another time, she said, I gently whispered in his ear, you are loved, after he collapsed on me. At first, it wasn't easy for him to let go, but the more we did this, the easier it got, she told me. With that hurdle overcome by building trust, sex got more open between these two, yet he was still dealing with other inhibitions. Knowing that rejection had been a major factor in his life, this woman knew the answer had to be showing him more acceptance if there was to be healing. For this reason, she practiced a say-anything-do-anything policy, where they talked and shared fantasies and fears together and experimented together. But in a more tangible way, she also practiced something she called full release, where he was free to come in her wherever he pleased, without fear of rejection. I wanted him to know that he wasn't dirty and that nothing about him was dirty, she said. And to boost his confidence a bit, she gently guided him with her hands to assume sexual positions that would give him greater control or a feeling of honor. Not long after they began connecting in this way, stress noticeably lifted from his face. For the first time in a long time, friends, family members noticed him more happy and relaxed than before, though they didn't entirely know why. <laughs> Unfortunately, as positive as this sounds, the relationship didn't last long. 
because so much healing work had to be done within him that he was unable to return the favor to her. Being so wrapped up in his own needs and his own insecurities and fears, he was unable to fully recognize and respond to hers empathically. And after a while, such a one-sided dynamic will end because the partner who is giving isn't being replenished, thereby becoming like a well run dry. This is a prime example of why I say that conscious sex only works when both partners are sexually conscious. So it's best to give at this level to someone who will reciprocate. Some of you need to work on, you know, doing sacral chakra cleansing and some healing affirmations for that are to say to yourself, to affirm to yourself, I'm alive, connected and aware. I embrace pleasure and abundance. I give myself permission to enjoy my sexuality fully. The sweetness of life flows through me and I radiate its joy. If you need to heal your sacral chakra, well, here's some advice. Many of us are, for one reason or another, unable to find sacred sexual connection with a partner at this time. If that's you, don't neglect your sexual energy because that's tied to your creative energy, impacting so much more than your sex life. If you neglect this, you could find yourself with the symptoms of a blocked sacral chakra, which are addictions, depression, emotional instability, fear of change, and sexual dysfunctions. Other manifestations may include dependency on people or possessions, eating disorders, feeling that you don't deserve pleasure, an inability to let go of the past, linking self-worth with what you do or have, a need for a new relationship or new environments frequently, overexerting yourself, being overly rigid or having loose boundaries, having repressed emotions, sexual obsessions, suppressing or overindulging in desires, being uneasy or unsure about sexual or emotional issues, and yes, urinary tract infections. To balance, unblock, and heal your sacral chakra, you must allow pleasure into your life and enjoy it. Express sensuality, which could be through good food, good friends, good gatherings. Nurture your needs. Show yourself love. Take walks on nature trails or drives with scenic views and rest. Some suggest surrounding yourself in the color orange or perhaps making a luxurious healing salt bath with drops of orange food coloring to make your bath water that color. Or eating orange foods like carrots, melons, oranges, pumpkin, squash, sweet potatoes, or simply eating sensual foods, aphrodisiacs like avocado, asparagus, coffee, chilies, chocolate, garlic, honey, pomegranates, strawberries, watermelon, and more. You'll know you're balanced and unblocked and healed when you're better able to acknowledge your emotions and feel. You're able to share your emotions. You're able to accept change and let go. You can comfortably express your sexuality and know your desires and be able to meet them in a healthy way. Knowing when enough is enough and having a willingness to honor your own sexual boundaries is a sign of healing. For women, on a more physical level, remember that our sexual organ is a muscle. And when muscles are not exercised, they lose their tone and elasticity. In extreme cases, they can atrophy. I know some of you reading this or hearing this may think that talk of such things is silly nonsense. But I kid you not, I have seriously met two women in my life who told me that their uteruses were prolapsed by age 45. In fact, one told me that she freaked out the day she found her insides bulging out of her. She had no clue that this could happen, but her doctor confirmed it wasn't her imagination. Both ladies were told to get surgery, one a hysterectomy, and the other to implant a surgical mesh for a weakened vaginal wall. God only knows how many more are suffering silently with this. One symptom of not having a strong pelvic floor is incontinence. If you've ever sneezed while your bladder is full and had a little leak, it could be a sign that this needs strengthening. My point in sharing this is to encourage you to take extra care of your bodies in the absence of a trusted sexual partner. One way to combat this weakening of your pelvic floor is with Yanni eggs for Kegel exercises. By the way, the link is provided a product using certified 100% authentic crystals. Rose quartz to promote love, jade to promote and speed healing, and black obsidian to shield against negativity. 
not an easy online find. Um, most aren't authentic crystals, so be careful about that. There are also crystal wands used for Kegel exercises. Tiger's Eye, by the way, can help alleviate fear and anxiety. Is said to awaken kundalini energy. And Red Jasper is said to aid in healing from violent sexual experiences. Full disclosure, however, I just learned about these products and I have no experience with them, but they seem like a much better alternative to surgery and adult diapers later in life, right? So plus you got to imagine your, your partner or your future partner will thank you for having things a little more snug downstairs. <laughs> I want to close out with this message about love and being loved. Well, if you've made it this far to the very end, I want to thank you for being one of the rare souls who invests your time into sharpening your relationship skills. It's been said that relationships are our life's most important work. For this reason, we're meant to be in union. That's a divine calling and purpose in life, wherein we learn to love and be loved as God intended. So I applaud those of you who take that spiritual work seriously. I hope something I've shared here has inspired you to create a sacred sexual space to deeply connect with another, or to simply explore and play from a more open and innocent heart space. I hope you find a conscious connection that embodies an allowing, revealing, and unfolding approach, where divine masculine gives divine feminine a feeling of being safe, seen, heard, and felt. And in return, divine feminine receives him and disarms his defenses. Through this exchange, may you both take the other's best interests as your own. I hope these things for you, because that, my friends, is sacred sexuality. May you enjoy plenty of it soon. If you missed part one of this series, you can check it out here. If you want to watch more of my relationship videos, you can check out this playlist right here. Until next time, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Be blessed.